Hello everyone, welcome to Nedi Mobile Vids. It all started with our Jetpack Compose series which you guys loved a lot and I am really thank you for that. Today we are going to start our super app development series and in this we are going to start our first sprint. We are calling it as a super app because this application is going to have a lot of features which you can use in your daily life. And we are going to follow Jetpack Compose to build this entire application. We are going to follow some of the latest best practices inside this development series. Most of you know that in our previous video we were using Android Studio Flamingo and before that we was using Electric L. But recently I was shooting the videos also in Flamingo itself. But after completing some video shoot I got to know about this new canary version Hedgehog and I installed the same. Okay, I explored, I do a little bit coding inside that canary version and then I go to know that Android Studio by default has the version catalog thing integrated now. Now what is version catalog? This is very important and recommended by Google and Android Studio to use for your central project dependency management. If you are familiar with our post office series, so you know that we were using build src folder and then we was using our project central dependency management, right? You can see this on the screen right now and using this we was implementing our modular architecture. But now I want to show you that how we can use version catalog for our multimodular architecture. And this is because we should be stay connected and we should be following the recommended way. And now I think version catalog will be the new norm. So we should be using version catalog to manage the dependency in our different different modules. And that's why inside our super app development series we are going to use version catalog for greater dependency management. This is the roadmap which we are going to follow. So let's go to backlog and start this development sprint. So I will just click on this start and the date we are going to choose 13 6 to 23. All right, let's start this. So our sprint is started and right now we only have this create a new module task inside our sprint. We have few tasks inside backlog as well. Let's move these to our active sprint itself. We will take this task as well and let's add in current sprint. Okay, so this is our current sprint and we have few tasks here. Okay, so let's open this task and let's see what we need to do to implement this task. Okay, so this is one task we have create a super app brand new project with new approach. New approach means this new version catalog thing. Earlier I was developing this project using traditional old build src module approach but now we are going to follow version catalog. So let's start with development part now. Okay, so let's click on this and take this to in progress. We are doing this task first. Okay, so right now in my system I have three Android Studio. This is Electric Ale, Flamingo and then this is Hedgehog. Okay, so let's click on this and we are going to use this one to develop the project. Okay, so this is the current project which we have developed so far. If you have missed this, you can check out the previous video. But I want to show you that how we are going to form the architecture for our new super app, right? Okay, now we have two options. One option is that we continue the same project and we do a load of R&D to find out how we can integrate version catalog in this Gradle application. And the second option is we create a brand new project with Android Studio Hedgehog and this will have the integrated version catalog support and we can scale that up. If you are familiar with our messenger app development series where we were developing the post office app and you have seen the build SRC approach you still have something good with yourself because that build src approach is still scalable but now we should adopt this new thing which is version catalog as i will show you that the moment we create a new project with android hedgehog this will give us the internal support for version catalog okay so let's create one new application and to do that we just need to create one new project now you can see that empty activity is by default coming out of compose package and we can just name it super app we can just change the package name com.nativemobilebits.superapp okay and let's add this to our project location 
okay and by default now build configuration you can see that Corti and DSL is the recommended and by default selected for our Android Studio project. I have also created one video to implement Kotlin DSL in Android applications. You can check that out at my channel. But for now, let's finish this and it will start creating one project for us. Okay, so our brand new project is created. Let's go and check out the project panel window. And inside this, we have one Gradle folder. And in this Gradle folder, we have this file lives stored versions. Okay, inside this, all the libraries and their respective versions are mentioned here. You can check out the versions. Then we have the libraries and we have some plugins and we have some bundle support as well. Inside this file, we have all the dependencies and their versions. Okay, you can check out that we have some versions defined. For example, this Kotlin version is 1.8.10 and then we are using this inside the plugin. So we have this plugin here defined their respective dependency and the version right so this is the new approach this is the version catalog and this dot toml this is also one specific language are you familiar with this this is called tome obvious minimal language and this is one clear syntax defined language like we can just define some variable and the respective value something like that and we can use these variables i will also show you more about this tome obvious minimal language in our upcoming videos this is also one new and interesting thing and now android studio has the default support with it okay now let me show you the major difference and this is one very drastic change in the approach which we were following in our previous videos and which we will follow in our upcoming videos so in our previous videos, this is one modular architecture which we have developed. You can see these videos also on the channel. We were following this build SRC. Inside that, we were having these two files, dependencies and versions, right? So these versions, we were defining all the dependencies, respective versions. And then inside dependencies, we was just declaring one object and then we was declaring one variable. We was just initializing with lazy and the respective dependency and their versions we were picking up from the versions file, right? Now we have our base project ready and this base project is following the latest version catalog as well. For now, let's close this. Now our main priority will be that quickly we need all the functionality we have developed so far inside this project right so for that first of all we will need firebase right first of all we will be needing firebase support for that login and sign up functionality so let's quickly go to firebase console okay and let's quickly add one new application as super app and click on continue we can create one brand new account as well super app jetpack compose click on save let's select this default United States for analytics and click on this and click on create project it will create one brand new project for our newly created super app let's quickly take the package name as well so we can just go to build.gradle and let's copy this and let's come back to console our project is ready and now inside this we will just add the needed thing and as we are going to focus on Android application we are going to select that we have added the package name optional let's add super app native mobile bits okay and for now let's register the application okay so this is going to give us this google services.json file we need this now let's copy this and we need to add this inside app folder okay so come back to our project inside this app folder we need to just paste this file okay now next thing is we need to add this firebase sdk right so we need to add this class path google services so let's go to our android studio let's open build.gradle project level and you see this is the new way we can add these plugins and all right so for that first of all let's go to plugins this is our version catalog right so here we are going to define one new plugin let's say google play services and you see this is also using camel case convention 
and we can declare this plugin with the help of ID we can just paste the ID we can remove this class path let's copy this okay this is the ID basically com dot google dot gms google services and we need to define versions so we can use this version dot reference okay and we will just pass the reference but first we need to define one reference for this right so we will just come to this versions and here we are going to define google services or let's say google play services version okay this is the version and we can use this in reference like this so if I just show you once again this is the way we can define one plugin so let's say we wanted to define this plugin this class path Google Play services so we can just define like this okay let's call it Google services itself okay and we are going to define one ID and then we can use version reference like this so let's refactor this as well and we can just rename it okay so our plugin is defined inside this version catalog file now let's define this in project level build.gradle so to define a plugin here we just need to use this alias and with the help of lives.plugins okay this is basically referring to this version catalog file then we have this plugin so it is coming inside this we need to use google services plugin right so we can just use that and we can write apply false and we can click on this sync project we are getting some error error is stating that plugin id google services is invalid and only sky alpha numeric characters are accepted okay so if we go to the declaration we have this colon so if we just replace this with dot and click on try again this error will be resolved keep in mind that we don't need to use colon and all we can just use this dot and our project will be synced perfectly now the next step is we need to take the firebase dependencies so we can just take from our project which we have developed so far we can open inside the next window and we need these firebase dependency right so let's just copy both of these and close this project okay so now we need to add these dependencies we need to include these dependency inside this library section okay we need to start with this firebase so let's copy this firebase worm this we will add first okay let's define one variable firebase worm and we are going to define one group okay these dependencies are coming out of firebase group which is before this colon okay let's copy this part add it here and to name we need to give the value which is after this colon which is firebase worm okay we can add it here like this okay now we need to define this version okay for this firebase worm so we can use versions reference okay we need to define one variable so let's say firebase boom and we can define the version value okay now we can use this in place of version reference like this this way we can define one dependency okay we have defined firebase boom we have added the group we have added the name we need out of this group and then we have added the respective dependency just have a closer look we needed this dependency so we have taken the group first firebase group is the parent and out of this group we have taken firebase boom we have added this inside name and for version we have defined one firebase boom version and we are using it as a dependency version okay we can remove this same way we need to use this firebase auth ktx so we can just take this we can add it here and we are going to define one group again okay group is similar basically this is com.google.firebase before this colon we can add it here okay and for name we just need to take the part after this colon okay this one 
we have used the same so we can just copy this we can add it in name so now we can remove these and we have added the dependencies right so we can sync the project okay so now we are good with dependencies for now let's open the project window and let's start with implementation for that login flow we are not going to implement from scratch we are going to utilize the code which we have done in our previous video so first thing is we need to define some kind of architecture which we want to implement inside all of our modules as this is going to be a multi-modular architecture based application it is going to have different different features and all of those features will be developed as a independent module right but inside those modules we will be having some kind of architecture which will be inspired by MBVM so let's first look at the files which we want to define inside this right so if we just open the previous project which we have developed so far so we are having one app class okay where we have listed all of the screens we have one for UI components, right? We have one data layer, but this is not going to scale as of now because this is having all the data for home, for login and everything. But for now, we are going to define architecture based on one application class, some packages for our UI components. Then we are going to differentiate the data layer and UI layer. Okay, okay, so let's start. So as of now, let's define one package. This is going to be application and this application class will be having our app class, which is extended with application, of course. And let's say we are going to have one package UI and this is already existing because it has this theme. So we can just modify this itself. We can just go inside finder and we can create one package here view models okay now our ui will be having theme and view models now inside this ui itself we are going to take this main activity this will be inside ui package so i'm just refactoring it okay now our main activity itself is in ui package now let's create one data layer and for that let's create data and inside this we are going to have two kind of packages one is remote and again let's go to finder inside this let's define local if we are going to have something with related to database and all we are going to have local db support as well and inside data package now we have both remote and local so if you want to have some kind of entities we can define in respective package you will see that in our upcoming videos or in upcoming sections now we need some kind of events as well right so let's open the project once again we are going to have some kind of data and inside data as of now we have event state and view model all right so let's just divide this in two panels okay okay so this is the project where we are declaring all of these architecture and this is the old project we have so let's start with our sign up and login flow so all of these will have some kind of ui events right so inside ui itself let's define one package ui events and this UI will be having a state as well. So let's define a state. Okay, so this UI is having our view model, our container activity, our themes, then our state and UI events also. So now let's start with our sign up flow. So we are going to have one view model. We are going to have some sign up event and these events are nothing but these value change or any other changes in sign up screen all of these events are there we are going to have one navigation module as well so for that let's define one package navigation okay and let's take the files as well so our navigation is having one system button back handler let's take this add it here for now 
all good yeah we will modify it whenever it's needed and I will show you the files as well once we have completed some kind of basic architecture let's take this router let's add it here and let's call it super app router okay all good it's having some kind of screens defined and everything all right so our navigation part is there then we have some kind of data and this data is having both UI events and all let's hold it for now let's take the screens okay so inside UI itself let's define one package and this is going to be screens okay and let's take sign up screens for now let's add it here all right there will be a lot of errors because we don't have all of these things it's fine for now let's take all of these screens add it inside screens override for all so all of our screens are now defined inside this UI directory now we need to take the state and events which is inside data right so let's take for sign up right so we need this sign up UI event let's come to UI event edit here sign up UI event let's take the sign up UI state which is registration UI state basically and let's add it inside state let's call it let's add it as it is for now we will refactor it so that it just renames everywhere okay we have added the state we have added UI events as well now let's take login flow UI event as well and I am not separating login and sign up as a different different module so we can keep it in the same directory so we can just take login UI event let's add it inside UI event okay let's take login UI state and add it inside state directory fine we need to take these view models as well so for that we need to add the dependency and we can take the view model dependency package from our build.gradle if you are wondering why we are not using studio board to add all of these dependency as of now it's not available in India I think we'll use that in future but for now let's take this view model directory all right view model compose let's expand this for now okay so now we need to add this view model lifecycle dependency as well so we need to follow the same steps which we followed while we defined this firebase dependencies so first of all we need to take this name okay and we are going to define one variable we are going to use one group and inside this group we need to take the value before this colon which is Android X lifecycle this is the group and out of this we need the dependency for lifecycle view model compose okay we can add it here now we need to define one versions so we can use version reference and this is the value we need for this version right so we can define something like lifecycle view model and let's say we write it lifecycle view model and we define the value now we can use it inside version reference okay like this all right and then our group is closed as well we can remove this we can sync the project so our dependencies are added okay so we can sync the project and we are good to go let's close all the files let's open project window so we need this login view model of course let's come to the view model section let's add it here okay let's take the sign up view model as well let's add inside our view model package itself we also have home view model yeah we can add it here again so we have all of our view models which we have defined so far it's going to be n numbers more right in our upcoming features implementation but for now we have these three we have added it inside view models package now we are done with view model addition now what we need next we need some rules as well yes so we can define one package inside UI validation itself so we can just define some package called 
rules and let's take this validator class add it inside rules okay view models is showing some error let's expand it what is the error okay we need to add these navigation items and all right okay so we need these navigation item and we also need these composable components so for that let's create one package let's call it components okay and let's take this file app components let's add it here and we are going to segregate this as well in our upcoming videos but for now we have added all of the composable components inside one file itself which is components okay it is showing errors and all we are going to solve all of the errors but first let's take all of the files so components are done app is done right data we have taken view model and everything state and everything we have taken the state right login state is there registration ui state is there yes that's fine now we need to take this navigation item if we just see the declaration this is kind of a data class we can add this somewhere inside our local package which is inside the data package right so let's take this let's create one package let's call it entities so this is going to be taking all of the local data class pojo classes inside this entities if you want to make any api or if you want to define some request body or response body we will define inside this but we will also need some kind of let's say db or some other thing right so we can define one package for that as well let's clear this and now our local package has entity and db right so we can take this navigation item add it inside entities right and this will be used wherever it's needed we have added registration ui state all right navigation is done screens are done and theme and all everything some values we need to take but for now it's done okay we need to add this login flow app as well so for now let's take it and let's add it inside our ui okay and we are good to go we need some resources as well so we can just take all of these resources and inside app inside drawable we can add it okay all of these things are added it's fine we have some strings and values so we can take all of these things and add inside our values we will just overwrite it for all do we have anything in xml that's fine we can take anything from manifest so we have not defined anything as of now so we can just take this main activity that will be already there let's close it let's expand it and let's go to our files one by one let's close everything okay so let's go through the files one by one so we have some error inside login flow app okay we need firebase dependency okay so the thing is we have added the firebase dependency inside our version catalog file but we have not included these dependency inside our build.gradle right so let's open the build.gradle for our app module and we need to define the dependencies here right so we need to use this firebase bom authentication and view model all of these dependencies right so to use these we need to just come to build.gradle of app module and we need to use implementation okay now here is the new part we need to take this group firebase group then we need to use these two names for these two dependency let me show you so we need to use lips dot firebase so this will give us access to both of these dependency bom and authentication right so let's use for bom and this is going to show us one indication that add as a platform because this is kind of a group of firebase related dependencies so we can just add platform okay and this warning will be gone now the next dependency is this one firebase authentication ktx so to use this we need to just use implementation lips dot firebase dot auth dot ktx okay 
and we can just sync the project and it will just integrate both of these dependency inside our app module. So it's integrating the Firebase dependency now and if we go to login flow app this error will be gone and our Firebase dependencies are added inside our project. Okay, now we need to use that view model dependency as well. So we can just use implementation and we need to use with libs and we are having this as lifecycle view model compose, right? This is the name. So we are going to use lifecycle and then we need to use view model. Okay, we can just sync now. So we need to access this Android X lifecycle runtime. So for this, we just need to use lives dot lifecycle dot runtime dot ktx. Okay, and our project is synced. Now, if we just go to the login flow app, Firebase dependencies are resolved, and view model is also accessible. Okay, so now dependencies are added as needed, and if we check, the Firebase are accessible, the view model class is accessible, so we are good to go. We just need to refactor this package syntax, right? So let's remove everything and let's re-import it because now navigation item is in this package. So now this error is also resolved. So earlier we was using this name for our router, but now we have changed the name to super app router, right? So if we just want to use this, we will be able to use with the help of super app router. For that, let's change this in entire project. So we can just replace it with super app router, replace all, okay, and let's import it. We need to import this screen class as well from our navigation and all of the errors are resolved in this view model. Let's close this. Let's open any of other view model. So here we need to access some UI events and all. So let's clear everything and re-import. Okay, re-import the event as well. Everything is good. We need to just re-import the validator as well from our rules. All of these things are fine. Let's re-import router and screens. Okay. Okay, so after fixing all of the files with correct import, our project is looking like this. Okay. So let me just minimize all of the files and if we just go inside our app folder. Okay, so this is the base architecture we have as of now. We have an application class. Okay, this is kind of a composable for now. This is the entry point for our super app. And here we are just checking if there is an active session or not. Based on that, we are showing the current screens. Then we have one data package. Inside this, we have support for local and remote packages. We have some entities defined here, right? Now, if we go to the navigation package, we have the router class implemented here. And we also have some custom handling for our back button handling. And we have this UI package. This package has a lot of sub packages. First of all, it has some components. Okay. All of the app components, which we have defined so far are listed here. Then it has a rule package which is having one validator which is used for validation of our UI fields. Then we have one screen package. It is having all of the screens, home screen, login screen, sign up and terms and condition screens. All of the screens are listed here. Okay. Okay. Then we have the states for login UI state and registration state. We also have some custom colors in our themes and some custom shapes. Okay. We also have some kind of typography, but this is pretty simple as of now. We can close all of these. We also have some UI events for login and sign up flow. Okay. You can check out in the previous video where we have implemented all of these events and we have our view models. Okay. Login, sign up and home view model. All right. And we have this application class where we are initializing the firebase. Let's refactor this name and let's call it super application class okay and this is basically extending application we can just take this to our application folder and here we have the entry point for our android project which is this application class we also have our super app composable 
okay so that's it for now the architecture side this is one pretty clear and scalable architecture we are going to scale this up in our upcoming videos and then we have our main activity where we are using this super app composable which is the entry point for our screens and then we have our main activity this is basically the launcher activity and inside this we are using the super app composable and this composable is responsible to take care of the session management of the logged in users and it also shows us the appropriate screen at a given time okay so now let's try to run our application and let's see how our app looks like in one emulator okay so our application is installed and as of now this button is not clickable which is a good sign because all the UI event logic is working fine so let's try to register one user and let's say we are registering iron man and let's give one email ironman at the rate gmail.com let's give one password one two three four five six and let's click on this register button it's not clickable that's good because we have not enabled this checkbox and now these details should be updated in the registration UI state and now this button is clickable which is a good sign our logic is working fine we have landed on the home screen our firebase user is created and we can see that in navigation drawer this email id is also showing up from firebase user which is a good sign that our logic is working fine in the new architecture new project setup now let's try to kill the application and let's see if the session management is working fine okay so let's click on this and don't worry about these icons we are going to change everything and now we have landed directly on home screen which means user session management is also working fine right let's go back to our project panel and close all the tabs this has been a lengthy video and it's hot weather at my place right now these so this is the architecture we have implemented inside our modular super app we are going to implement a lot of things from now on we have this application package we have this data package with entities and DB support and everything we also have remote package as many of you are waiting for retrofit and other libraries to integrate to make some network calls we are going to do that and we also have navigation setup we also have UI and inside UI package we have components rules screen states UI event view model and lots of things so guys that's it for today's video I hope you enjoyed this part if you enjoy this please like share and subscribe to my channel it has been a very hot video for me as well because we have implemented a good feature good project architecture to start with also the weather is very hot right now please support this video and please like share and subscribe to my channel I will see you in the next video Thank you.